Hello, this is a dude named Kemp, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set a spawn point in a map in Hammer Editor, and then how to run that map in the game that you, well, made the map for. Now, I should uh, mention right now that, as you can see, I'm recording in a smaller video frame, because in my last video about Hammer Editor, I tried to record the full screen, and while you could basically tell what I was doing, it lagged pretty badly. So um, instead I'm just going to be recording like this. I hope you don't mind. So um, what we have here is a basic six-sided room. The hammer editor, I already made a video about how to uh, make that. Not very hard. So you're going to click on the entity tool, which is the white one right here. Scroll over to the right, the very right, and um, <coughs> I have to go over something here. Uh, here is a list of entities, see right here, that you can um, create all these. And uh, depending on what in what version of the source engine you're <coughs> making this map for, like a multiplayer or um, or a modified single player, there will be a different name for the uh, spawn point entity. As you can see here, the, I'm making this for um, episode 1, Half-Life 2 episode 1 version of the source engine. It's called Info Player Start and I believe that is um, the standard, well, the most used name for a single player source engine game. But in multiplayer games like Team Fortress 2, it'll have different, it'll probably have a different variation on that, like Info player underscore blue or red or rebels or combines or something like that but um <coughs> here it's just going to be info player start so uh, anyway you want to select that or whichever kind of spawn point entity it's called and you can go over and there are two ways to create the spawn point you can click anywhere here and those up here, those are different spawn points. And, uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. But, there, you can also, um, <coughs> try something else using the th other three windows that you have. These three. Um, <coughs> instead, you can just click. Oh, sorry, I deselected it. Okay. Uh, instead, you can just uh, click and drag set point. And uh, once you have a coordinate selected and you let go and you press enter, your um, there will be a spawn point entity there. And well, as you can see, he's in the ground, but that's because I just did it from the top view and not the side view. But um, <coughs> so you can do it either one of those ways. It really doesn't matter. Obviously, using the camera way is usually more efficient, but that's just me. And um, keep in mind that if you're making a multiplayer map, you should, well, you pretty much have to set multiple spawn points. Otherwise, everybody's going to try to spawn in the same area, and they're all just going to spawn into each other and get stuck. I don't, th I don't think that causes the game to crash, but you're all just going to get stuck. So, um, well, yeah, just create one. And now, when you start up the game, he will spawn facing that way. If there's any objects in front of him right here, when you spawn, he'll um, he'll be facing that. You'll be facing those. You can tell obviously by his um, Gordon Freeman glasses and goatee. Anyway, so uh, after you've done that and you want to try to run the map, you press File, Run Map. Obviously, and um, <clears throat> what was I gonna say? Uh, um, when you save the Hammer Editor map, it is not saved in a format that is immediately usable by whatever game you're making the map for. <clears throat> Instead, when by doing this, you'll um, be compiling the uh, file you made with the Hammer Editor map into a usable format for Valve games. Well, not the game's just made by Valve, but any source engine game. So, um, 
as you can see you want to set all these three to normal if you want if your computer can do high dynamic range you can check that box and um, additional game parameters what you're going to want to put is this to console dev console plus sv underscore lan1 um, I hope you can read it anyway um, then you press ok but for me it just for the purpose of recording this video I'm gonna click don't run the game after compiling because since I'm recording in a windowed area it'd be pretty pointless for me to try to show you what it looks like so press ok and this window will pop up it's uh, the compile process window as you can see it just shows the uh, process of what it's doing as it compiles it into a usable format um, actually I think it's actually done right now for me because obviously it was a very simple map just a room and a spawn point but <coughs> depending on the complexity of your map how many objects are in it how many brushes how many entities and all that it it could be as varying levels of how long it takes often it will take a very very long time or perhaps just a very short time but um if yours is um on the compile process window and it appears as if it's frozen up like say where it says portal flow and it's listing numbers one to one through nine or one through ten I can't quite remember right now but if it's um showing that and it seems to have gotten stuck on one number just give it a while that's happened to me several times and it will eventually load the full thing if your computer doesn't crash which it shouldn't it shouldn't my computer maybe it's just my computer my computer's pretty much crap but <coughs> Anyway, that's basically it. If I had not checked Don't Run the Game After Compiling, um, Half-Life 2 Episode 1 would be starting up right now and showing me the map I just created. And it should do the same for you if you did as I showed. So, um, anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Now keep in mind, I got all the information for this video from a website. It's um, basically a Wikipedia for... Um, <coughs> for st the source engine games, valve games, and it has a um has a tutorial on how to make uh, hammer editor maps and I'll put the link in the description or make an annotation or both of uh, to show you uh, how to get there. So, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.